This Faith Thing, Episode 005. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Today we are going to examine the role of a husband and a father. Men have the most important role in a home as a husband and a father. I grew up in a home where the dynamics between my father and mother were fantastic. My father is a jokester and he always would call my sisters and I to the table to share one story or another with us. Even as an adult, he still does the same thing. His stories were about his life growing up, about what he learned in Nigeria, and whatever he could give us to help us as children. Nothing made my father's stories more enjoyable than his display of how the story actually went. But as children, we often loved his stories because it was giving us more of an insight on who our father was, as well as developing a very strong relationship with our father. My father was the first man on earth to love me. He showed me what a father should be like and how I should expect a man to be a father in my eventual home. He was there for me every step of the way while I was growing up and he is still there today. He was not a figurehead father, but one who was readily in the home and in the church. I tell all of my friends and anyone that I meet that I learned what a man should be like for his wife from my father. And I also learned what a father is to be like from my father. He was there to assist my mother all the time in any way she needed when she was raising my sisters and I. He never left the job to my mother alone. He was actually the very first person who spoke to me about the woman's monthly cycle and even sex always telling me that he had to do it first before the world did it for him. He never said that my mother should be doing it just because she's a female. He saw the need in a father discussing such matters with a daughter. He was a great co-parent, and he still is. Husbands have a very important role as the head of a house. The moment the man loses the meaning of being the head of the home, is the very moment that he loses the most important assignment in life. God designed all men to be leaders and the head of a very important establishment, the home. The moment the man is no longer the head, he is in big trouble with God. Many homes are ripped apart today because the head is nowhere to be found. Satan knows exactly what he's doing by destroying the head because if he destroys the head, he destroys the family unit. He destroys the marriage and makes the marriage to collapse, which is what Satan is after. So it's very important for a man to know his job, to know his role, to know what God has assigned him for, and to also be very vigilant of the war which is raging against him. God never intended for homes to be ran by the woman. That's why he made Adam first. Today we live in a society where there's approximately 51% of women living in a home with children and no husband. And one in every three child in America is growing up without a father. The role of the man is very multifaceted and it should not be taken lightly. When God created the earth, he created Adam and he gave him everything he needed. He gave him an important role as well, which is to have dominion over the creatures. Just this alone, just this statement alone should make every man stand up straight and understand the role which he has been called to be. God intended for the man to be in charge, the man to be the head of the household, the man to make final decisions. Just as the president of the United States of America makes final decisions, the man is to make final decisions for his home. He is the president of his home and he is the captain of the ship. Men should enter their roles with prayers 
and solely rely on God for wisdom. Let's look at the book of Ephesians 5, 25 through 33, which tells us and describes to us exactly what the relationship between the husband and wife should be. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reference her husband. The book of Ephesians 5, verse 25 through 33, it lays down the foundation that is supposed to happen inside of the home between a husband and wife. Verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wife even as Christ loved the church. Paul further goes on saying that no man ever hated his own body, but he nourishes it. He cherishes it. That is exactly what the Bible is calling for every man to do for his wife. Ephesians 5, 31 further goes on to say that every man should leave his father and mother and he will cleave to his wife and the two of them will become one flesh. He will leave his mother and father. There shall be a separation from his mother and father because at this moment he has now become a man. Anytime a man says that he wants to get married, he will now become a man wearing the pants in the house, making final decisions. He is supposed to leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife so the two of them can become one flesh. When you husbands take a wife, you are to... Treat them with respect. You are to do exactly for your wife what you would do for yourself. The Bible tells you that no man ever hated his own flesh. He doesn't hate himself. He's not supposed to harm himself. And so because you don't harm yourself, you are not to harm your wife. You are to treat her as one flesh. Exactly the way you treat yourself. In fact, even better than the way you treat yourself. You are to treat your wife. Husbands, love your wife. That's the commandment of God. It doesn't say that the wife should love her husband. In Ephesians 5, it never says, wife, love your husbands. It says, husbands, love your wife. And when you love your wife, husbands, when you take care of her, when you nourish her, when you provide for her, when you bombard her with your love, with your presence, with your gifts, with your kindness, in turn, she will love you. That's how it works. That's the way God intended it to be. Women don't just love because you look good. They don't love you because you make money. They want you because you're giving them something. You're providing the love that the book of Ephesians 5 is speaking of. Unconditional love. In all things, love your wife. You're not to dictate to her. It's not a dictatorship. You're not to abuse her mentally, verbally, Physically, sexually, you are not to abuse your wife. You're not to ridicule your wife. You're not to talk down on your wife, but you are to love your wife. That is the commandment of God. Husbands, love your wife. A lot of husbands miss it. They want their wife to respect them. They want their wife to do everything that they want for themselves without loving the wife. It doesn't work that way. You cannot expect your wife to respect you, to cherish you, to carry you high, to consider you her king, her lord in the home when you don't love her. You have to show love for her in the home and outside of the home. It's not enough to love your wife outside of the home and then when you get into the four walls of your home, you're disrespecting her. You talk to her anyhow. It's not enough. Love your wife like Christ loves the church. 
Any man who thinks that the wife that he has today is exactly the same lady that he met when he first met her is deceiving himself. Women change. I can tell you that because I'm a woman. We change. Life changes us. Situations changes us. The desire to make it in life changes us. Wanting to provide for the children, it changes us. But when you remember that as a man, you are to leave your mother and father and cleave to your wife and you become one, it makes it easier for you to understand us. No lady is going to look exactly the same. The way you first met her, it's impossible. You may have seen her as a size two and now she's a size eight. She's not going to stay the same. Ladies want you to learn their mood. They want you to learn what ticks them off, what makes them happy, what they enjoy, when she's not in the mood, what she doesn't like to eat, when she likes to eat it. That's the job of a husband. That's the job of the man. You are to, to find out exactly what your wife wants from you, what she desires from you. That's what it means to be the man. That's what it means to be the president of your home. That's what it means to be the captain of your ship. It takes a long time, friends. It doesn't happen overnight. It may not even happen in the first year. In fact, it probably won't even happen in the first year. And you may even feel like you're growing apart. But prayerfully, you will be growing together. It takes a while to understand your wife. But as long as you understand that you are to love her, you may not like her in that very moment, but you are to love her. And when you love her, everything else that she desires or everything else that you desire, rather, will come with no problem. It will come with ease. As the man of the home, you are to provide for your family. You are to get up every morning and go to work. You are to look for work if you don't have anything to do. You are to desire to provide for the family. It's not enough to go out and work and bring money in the home. Your wife and your children need you physically and spiritually. They need you to be the head of the home. They need you to provide food on the table. They need you to take care of the family. It is not the job of the wife to provide. It is the job of the husband. 1 Timothy 5.8 says that any man who does not provide for his family, he has denied the faith and he is worse than an infidel. It is not the job of the wife to make that happen. It is the husband's job. If she does it, she's simply assisting you. She's simply helping you out with requirements for maintaining the home. It is the job of the man to do it. You wear the pants in the family, not your wife. You should be bringing in the paycheck. You should be putting food on the table, not your wife. Also, you need to bring the word of God into the family. You need to plaster it on all the walls of your house. It needs to be in the four corners of your home, in every room, and your wife and your children need to know, in this house, we will serve the Lord. When you bring the word of God into the home, it plasters your home together. As a child growing up, my parents had a plaque in the house that said, a family that prays together stays together. And if anyone wants to know the secret of why families stay together through thick and thin, it's simply because of prayer and because of the word of God. The man's job is to bring the word of God into the home. The man's job is to wake up on Sunday mornings and say we are going to church. Whether you feel like it or whether you don't feel like it, it doesn't matter because we are going. That's the job of a man. The man's job is to wake up in the morning time and call the family for morning prayer. The man's job is to sit at the dining table in the evening time to pray over the food. That is the job of the man. Being a man is not an easy task, but with the Lord on your side, it will become easy. The man's job is also to provide discipline for the children. You are to talk to your children all the time. Let them hear your voice every single day. In fact, let your children step out of your house and in the back of their minds, hear your voice. When they are deciding that wrong decision, when they're making that wrong decision of things that peer pressure allows them to think about, let them hear it in their head that you have already spoken to them because of their father, they won't make the wrong choice. That's the job of a man. The Bible in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, train up a child in the way of the Lord. And when that child gets older, he or she will not depart from it. When you train up your children, when you talk to them over and over and over again, it sticks. And if you think it's not sticking, keep talking. Keep talking to them until it has stuck in their head. 
Overload them with the word of God. Overload them with your voice. Discipline them when you're supposed to. Don't wait to discipline the children. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 24, that a parent that spares the rod hates their child. And what does that mean? It means that you're ready for your child to become a nuisance to society. You are ready for your child to be derailed. You are ready for society to train the child for you. Society is not responsible for training your children. The church is not responsible for training your children. The schools are not responsible for training your children. The babysitter is not responsible for training your children. You are responsible for training your child. That is the job that God has given you. When you look at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 12 through 36, we read the story of Eli the priest. And if you read the beginning parts of 1 Samuel 2, you will see that that is the story of Hannah and how she went to Shiloh to pray for a child and God blessed her with her son Samuel. And the Bible records that she gave her son Samuel Samuel back to the Lord and so she took him back to Eli the priest to raise him and so as Eli was raising Samuel he was raising him in the way of the Lord Samuel's heart was very it was very soft and it took the training from the Lord however Eli had two children of his own two sons of his own who were very wayward children they were doing as they pleased they were doing what they wanted because they chose to desire to, to, to look after their own lust. Eli's sons were called the sons of Belial, and they are known as worthless men because they decided to go against the word of the Lord. They decided to not know the Lord. They decided to take the Lord out of their heart. And so one of the stories that you read in 1 Samuel 2, starting from verse 12, you read that, Eli's sons, they turned their back on God and they misused the offering of the Lord to satisfy their own lust. God told his people to bring a sacrifice to him in a certain way. And the way that they were supposed to bring the sacrifice to, to God, the sons of Eli did it their own way. They were to remove their fat, the fat from the, the animals that they were bringing, and they were to burn it separately. And then the priest was to come and receive the portion that belonged to him and to his family. And the rest of it will be split amongst the rest. However, Eli's sons, what they did was that they twisted what could have been or what should have been a beautiful sacrifice. They've changed it. They made it to not be beautiful anymore because they were desiring after their own lust. They wanted to do after their own flesh, according to their own desires is how they wanted to operate. So before the fat portions of the meat and sacrifice was placed on the altar fire, the priest's sons, Eli's sons, what they did was that they demanded now that they are given the meat from the sacrifice. And they took more than what they were supposed to. And they really didn't care who complained. And they told them that if they complained, that they would even take more. And when Eli was told, when he heard of what his children were doing, he didn't talk to them on time or he didn't reprimand them the right way. The children, his sons, they began to sleep with the ushers. They began to sleep with the female ushers and just misusing them anyhow. Eventually, Eli rebuked his sons. But they didn't listen to him. At that point, their hearts were, were very hardened. They had a very hard heart and they did not take what their father was telling them. And so they grew worse. The mistake that Eli made, because he did talk to his sons, but the mistake that he made was that he should have removed them from office and he didn't. And when he didn't remove them from office, the sons continued in their waywardness. They continued doing whatever they desired to do for themselves the way they liked to do it. And unfortunately, God's judgment fell upon the house of Eli. And if you continue to read the story, you will see that God said that his sons will die. And not only would they die, but they will both die on the same day. What a catastrophe. Men, you are to take a stand in your home. You are to take the stand of a president, of the captain of that ship. And make sure that your wife and your, and your children, that they follow the word of God. And they do it exactly the way God has it written. You're not to deviate from it. You're not to mend it to fit your own desire. 
Following the word of God brings benefit and not following the word of God brings calamity. You are to correct your children in love. Talk to them on time. Anytime a parent waits till the child is five years old, six years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, before you begin to correct the child, you have waited too late. A child understands no once he or she comes out of the womb. You are not to wait until you think they can hear you. They, they can hear you. The child can take correction from when they are babies. You are to correct them well in advance of them growing up and forming their own mentality, forming their own thinking skills. You want them to have God's thinking skills. You want them to have the word of God in their hearts. That's what you want as a father. That's what you want as a husband. Most importantly, as fathers, you are to pray for your family. You are to go into your own corner every single day and pray that God will be with your family, that God will, will protect your family, that God will keep your family. Because if you are a working family, husband and wife, you're going to go to work, children will go to school, and it's by God's grace that you will meet in the evening safely. You are to pray for the protection of God for your family. That is the job of a husband. And my prayer for every man that's listening to this message is that God will provide you with all the tools that you need to be a man. That he will make the job easy for you. Because being a man, even though I'm not a man, but I have seen how men work hard. I know that it can be a very difficult job. I know it can be very tedious and stressful. But my prayer for you is that God will make it easy. And he will show you the correct way in being a man. He will provide all the tools necessary in being a man. He will make the process easy for you. And know that when it gets tough, Christ is by your side. God bless you. And I'll speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adil Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.